Okay. So today we are going to talk about realistic goal setting. Um, and we are at the beginning of 2021. So happy new year, everyone. And thanks for joining us. So I'm going to start the share screen here so we can get into the presentation. Can you guys see this? Perfect. All right. So we're going to talk about realistic goal setting and especially in regards to how to set up goals that you can actually adhere to or stick to. Um, goals that you can continue working on consistently. Um, that doesn't necessarily give you this unnecessary suffering um, and that you are suffering through the whole process of getting to the end goal. Um, I'm kind of of the opinion that if you are going to work towards something, that process needs to be enjoy like uh, fun and you need to enjoy it to some degree. Um, now, when you are losing weight, for example, if you're working towards um, more muscle mass or whatever goal you have, you might find that some parts of that process is tough and tricky and um, it's going to take a lot of energy of you. And some parts of that is probably going to be like brushing your teeth. It's something that you do every single day uh, or like several times a week and might not be that fun or that enjoyable, but still some part of reaching uh, this goal, the journey towards that should be enjoyed, I find, because otherwise you're probably not going to stick to this goal or the process of actually reaching those goals. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, I'm not going to list everything that I can think about uh, for setting up a realistic goal. I'm going to talk about the main points and hopefully provoke some thoughts around it so that you can take those with you and digest them a little bit and think about them and then come up with a plan that works for you. So, very common way to set a goal is to say, I want to lose 10 kilos in 12 weeks. Or it could be, I want to do a handstand in 30 days. And for some people, that very specific goal in a specific time frame is going to be exactly what they need. Um, I find that mentally, it's often um, what people like, um, well, some people like, to sort of have quite restricted, uh, a restricted setup or very specific setup that they can um, work towards or work within. But sometimes I also see that when people set up goals like that, they might not take their current capacity, injuries, training history, um, what is involved in this new type of training, they might not take all of those sort of factors into consideration. Um, and they are focusing a lot on the end goal or the, the outcome of what they want. And they think, oh, I can probably do that in X weeks or X days or whatever it is. Um, so we're gonna have a look at some ways that you can think about this that actually sets you up for a realistic uh, path towards your goal. So here are some things to think about. Firstly, we're all uh, different. So what works for me might not work for you. So we all have individual motivators, mental tricks that can work for us, um, and obviously different needs as well. So when I sit here and say, you know, think about this and this and this, these are the things that I would have a look at, they might not work so well for you or you might need to actually adjust them a little bit 
so that they are more suitable for how you are as a person and for you to actually stick to the plan. And so if consistency is key, as we tend to say in the training world, you need to obviously stick to a plan to get an, a specific outcome. Is it then better for you personally to work on the process or work with the outcome in mind? And when I say that, I mean the process as things like eating your vegetables with every meal or doing your three handstand sessions per week. It's something along the lines or something that is tied to the actual process, the doing during the path towards the outcome versus having a focus on the outcome where you might go, okay, I need to do X successful repetitions of this handstand kick up each set in each session, or it might be that you set yourself up for, okay, if I'm going to be able to do 30 second uh, freestanding handstand at the end of 12 weeks or 30 days or whatever it is, then it means that I need to increase by X seconds in my hold every single week so that I can get there. And for some people, that kind of target is useful. For other people, they are going to be going through some unnecessary suffering because they might not actually reach those goals as you go along. And um, having a big focus on the outcome can sometimes detract from the little things that you need to do sort of day to day or week by week to later on reach that goal um, but it's in the doing and in that process that you kind of get there right so it's two different ways of like looking at how to work any questions so far or any input any thoughts or anything like that no all right the other thing that I want to bring up is that so far, it's so, so common that we end up rushing things. We want fast results. We want things to be a certain way yesterday. And I want to say, so what if it takes time? Because if you think about a permanent or an integrated change into your system. And that comes with physical, uh, mental and emotional aspects. It's not just the physical that we are working with, we are working with the whole person and that takes the mental and emotional aspect into it as well. But if we think about like the physical change that you need um, for actually uh, getting like a permanent change or like an integrated new type of way of moving, for example, that takes months, weeks and months. That takes quite a long time. So I usually say for someone who comes to me and they have back pain, for example, sometimes their back pain can actually go away uh, within, you know, a couple of weeks, months, you know, quite a short amount of time. But for that, um, for more long-term sustainable changes to uh, occur, you need time. For the, the structures need time to actually change and grow and integrate and all of those sort of things. So, you know, um, I think that's really something to potentially start looking at a little bit differently and just asking yourself, okay, well, does it really matter in the long term if I lose these 10 kilos in 12 weeks or in 18 weeks? So keeping this time frame in mind a little bit, so maybe slow yourself down and actually just taking the time to really go through this process well. The next point I want to talk about is this uh, thing of like, shit happens, then what? Okay, so in this process, 
if we set up a plan and it's very specific with like, okay, at the end of 30 days, I want to be able to do a, a 10 second free standing handstand. That means that on, you know, average these many days, I need to do this much progress, blah, 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 blah. But what if that does not happen? Then what? Then we need to be adaptable. We need to um, be able to change the plan, maybe the time frame, uh, maybe the way that we are doing things. We need to stay open for changing things as we go along. Because if you have set up a goal and things don't go to plan, which is a pretty common thing to happen, then there, that is going to create a lot of unnecessary suffering again, where there is a gap between potentially what the plan is and what is realistic for you. So it's going to create a lot of friction, especially mentally. It's going to be really tough to maybe do those changes that are necessary. Maybe push the time frame um, forwards a little bit to actually give you more time, whatever it is. So changing your attitude, making sure that you stay open for that shit can happen and actually being able to sort of navigate through that. That's going to be really important in um, the goal setting. So basically, uh, realistic goal setting uh, for me is oftentimes a plan that you can stick to, a plan that does not involve unnecessary suffering for you. And that goes very often times it's mentally and emotionally uh, or mental and emotional aspects uh, that we tend to we suffer through something or we create a goal that is not realistic and therefore we're suffering because we, you know, we're getting frustrated with not reaching that goal and that sort of thing. So my question to you or my sort of prompt is the goal with having a goal um, from a healthy general health perspective, I should probably say. Um, this is going to be quite different if you're an athlete, if you have certain goals, you have you have specific time frames for, you know, when the Olympics is and stuff like that. But if you are a person of like general the general population and you want to stay healthy, you have some goals with your training um, and that sort of thing. What would your goal look like if you created it with consistency and minimal suffering in mind? And feel free to chime in and you know share any sort of thoughts or if there's any questions that you have on this. Um, I would love to get some um, discussions around this because there might be some things that I haven't mentioned in this presentation that you think of that would be good to mention. So feel free to jump in, either unmute yourself or type in the chat. So I am uh, unmuting. Yep. Uh, I think this is very interesting uh, also uh, that you talk about suffering because I uh, really I recognize myself in this and uh, through the years that I've passed that uh, it is it has been uh, often connected to suffering actually setting up goals um, and uh, but one thing I, I thought about was um, so I, you know that I set up this goal for the next year or this year now uh, connected to New Year's that I'm uh, going to try to uh, meditate uh, every day. And first, well, this is a comment. At first, uh, I uh, wanted to uh, meditate 10 minutes a day. I thought that's not much. I will manage. And then you said, well, hey, maybe you can start with five. Why not? And actually, it was very, I felt kind to myself when I lowered it to five. And I thought, I'm going to start. I mean, it's even much to uh, 
to do that every day. So why not start with five? That's a good thing, I think. I mean, five minutes, everybody has five minutes to find somewhere during the day, so it's easier. But I also have a question connected to this. So my uh, idea is that if I uh, miss uh, one day or two or something, then those five will add up to the next day and the next day. So actually at the end of the year, I could have hours left, <laughs> but I, I'm not planning on that. But <laughs> So what do you think about that sort of goal? I mean, yeah. is that a good strategy to have or, or would it be better, you think, if I wouldn't uh, add those missed five minutes? What do you think? Uh, um, yeah, it's a really good question. I have a thought about that. Yeah, okay. go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I like you, both you and, and Luke are talking about brushing your teeth. And you can actually apply that thought to your brushing your teeth. If you miss brush, brushing your teeth one evening, will you actually brush your, your teeth three times a day <laughs> the day afterwards? Because you missed one. Do you? Because I don't think you do. You just missed one. And that's, that is that. Shit happens. It's not the end of the yeah. world. And I think that's the problem for women in general. I'm general, generalizing here, but women in general tend to, um, I need to make up for something I've missed. I, yeah. I, I, I ate too much uh, um, uh, dessert. Now I need to run an extra mile. Hmm. I, think, I think we need in general to stop thinking like that because life is dynamic. And so our goal setting and our way of thinking needs to be dynamic as well. Because if we ha are so rigid that we save up things and we need to pay for, for what we do with everything mm -hmm. I think we'll end up in with the miners in our account because mm -hmm. if it's like we have this saying that you need to be physical active before you need to get go down and, and be cozy on Fridays so uh, but <laughs> that means you need to pay to get to be able to have something cozy why do you have mm -hmm. to pay to feel good I, I don't like that kind of way of thinking. Mm. And I think, we, I think we need to be like more dynamic in, in the way we, we regard it. So I think you, you know, if, if you miss one day, you miss one day, it doesn't matter. Because if you consist mm. with five minutes a day, you were gonna, you were gonna see it's that you will want more than five minutes in, in a few weeks time. You would want yeah. more. And then you will add up with more minutes anyway. So, and, if you count together all the minutes at the end of the year, I think you will have more than five minutes every day, even if you missed a day or two, or even 10 days for that matter of fact. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I like the, those thoughts. That's very interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I think uh, that's along the lines of what I was going to say as well. When I, because I have a daily um, meditation practice myself also, and I've had to learn that um, the hard way because I used to also be like beating myself up big time if I miss a day or two or whatever or any time I miss it and over the years I've kind of realized what uh, Caroline was just saying that it's like I'm just beating myself up for something that like I'm stressing over something that I don't need to stress about and so missing, um, missing, you know, a few days or whatever, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to count or anything like that either. You just have that intention of doing five minutes a day. Um, but then you can also think the next step, okay, I've missed a few days. Why is that? And what do I need to do to actually set myself up for this routine and get this uh, into a habit? So then you can start like observing, okay, what is it that I do that mm, like stops me from actually incorporating this to my daily routine? Um, so I think that would be a more useful way to sort of go forward uh, rather than adding and adding and adding. And I think that's a really good point that Caroline was saying as well, that there's a lot of people out there, sometimes women, sometimes men, 
that tend to do this thing where you, you punish yourself for not being able to um, uphold the goal that you've set. And that is really dangerous as well. So that is where this thing of like being adaptable that comes in and also from the beginning and even like throughout being able to be realistic with what you can do. There is no not a gap between where you're at and um, where you want to be. Obviously, there is going to be a gap uh, which you need to sort of work towards. But if um, it's unrealistic for whatever reason, then that is going to create a lot of unnecessary suffering, I think. Thank you. <laughs> I actually have a couple of more thoughts on this. Go for it. Um, well, sometimes I think it's uh, hard to know what a, what a um, realistic goal is. Um, an, an example is that I climb. And so I'm at a certain level now and it's, uh, they have names. So I'm at uh, 6C or 6C plus. And um, so next year I thought, ah, oh, maybe I can manage to do 7A, but because that's the next level. Mm -hmm. But I, I have no idea how hard it is actually, because I'm not there yet. <laughs> it is the next level, but sometimes... I mean, already 6C or 6C plus is really pushing my limits today. So, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if, if it's possible. But with climbing, it's not a problem for me because I don't really need goals. It's just so much fun. So I just do it anyway. Uh, and I really, really don't need goals. But uh, I don't know. It, it might be fun as well sometimes to, to start trying to have something to look uh, forward to or I don't know <laughs> I, I think that um, in this instance like you are doing it mainly for fun um, what you can do there is focus on the process rather than the outcome so you can for example then be like my intention is to get better at this so that maybe one day I can do this uh, I don't know what you call it track or Path or uh, climb, lead, maybe. Think. Yeah. Lead. Okay. Um, yeah. And you don't necessarily need to set up like you need to do this lead by this or, date. I don't know if it's called lead in English. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this path. Let's just let's yeah. say this yeah. path. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know that it's necessary for you to set a specific goal unless that is something that you're really driven by, then maybe there is some, um, some value in that for you. But if you're doing it as a fun activity, um, which I know that you're doing and, you know, it's the de-stressing from work and all of that sort of thing, then maybe you don't need to restrict yourself into a specific goal in this activity, because then you potentially end up making it something that you don't want it to be if you know what I mean mm. yeah I really don't want to have any pressure du during climbing uh, because that's the idea is to only have fun with it and actually I get so many ideas now uh, talking about it because uh, focusing on the process I kind of could identify uh, small things that I need to be able to uh, climb a 7A one day. I mean, it's more strength and yeah, you know. Yeah. So maybe it's better to focus on that. Good idea. Yeah, I think so. But you've got to try it as well and see how it works for you. And then again, um, you can always change things. You're not stuck yeah. into this like one thing all the time, but it is like yeah, Caroline was saying before as well, like things, life is dynamic. So we need to be able to um, swap and change things that they might not become relevant for you anymore, even. Mm. Yeah. Did you have another question or <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have one more uh, thought. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I think this is very interesting 
because it's a mental challenge. Um, a lot of this is uh, a mental challenge. And uh, I think more and more um, like scientists and stuff are also discussing that uh, health is the whole you. <laughs> it's uh, mentally and physically and uh, socially and it's uh, everything. And I have also noticed that when my mind is not really alert and uh, at the top one day, then my training might also be super terrible that day. So <laughs> yeah, it's uh, my body is very much connected to uh, my mental health. So, uh, and also about setting goals and yeah, I think, uh, yeah, but that's just a, a thought, but uh, it's a challenge for the mind. <laughs> I think that's interesting because a lot of people now that know uh, in new years, they're setting a goal. I know this all this about goal, but I, last year I started thinking that I don't need goals. I want to set an intention of the year. And my intention for 2020 was balance. And I made that in balance between work and, and, and spare time, balance between having complete control and actually living through the chaos. Balance with, uh, and that's when I actually came funny, funny to, to learn about just headstands again and handstands. And that's also balance. And the intention for, for 2021 is going to be more self-care and self-love. Do it for me and what, and not for some unrealistic social norm, but actually doing things for me. Because what do I want? Because I'm the one who's going to live with it. I'm the one who's going to need to be actually going through it. So it needs to be more egoistic, but in a in a not in a bad way. <laughs> using that word, <laughs> it's got a lot of stigma on it. But in a way that makes me grow as a person without to cost on anyone else's feelings or in, and not to cost of my own feelings and how I feel about it. And then and that I thought was what, what you're talking about too about the mental parts, that everything is connected. So if you don't do it with self-love for your own, then you won't be able to stick to it either. No matter how good everyone says it is, if it doesn't ring your bell, it won't ring your bell, then you won't do it. Yeah, I totally agree. I don't think I have anything to add there. I think it's exactly what you guys just said. Um, and I think that's a really good note to probably finish this presentation with, unless you have any other thoughts or questions or anything like that. All good? No, All I'm good. super satisfied and uh, I'm... Uh, thankful for uh, starting a process in my mind. <laughs> awesome. Very good. Well, I'm going to say thanks for, uh, to you guys for coming. And obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks as well. If you have any questions, you can put those in the comments box. Um, and other than that, I hope that you have a really good 2021.